The process that I used um, is the traditional process. It's the process that I learned when I was studying in Italy for 10 years. Um, and that is to, to work through a series of, of um, designs. I start off with a series of drawings, kind of sketching out the ideas, and then I eventually turn to actually a clay maquette, uh, probably about maybe 12 inches tall, to kind of work out the composition. Once we decided that that was the direction we wanted to go, I then started to work on, on this, which is the one-third scale model. Once we have approval of the model, then I use a very old technique of enlargement. Probably dates back to as far back as, as the Greeks. I constructed a, a frame around this piece, and I then constructed another frame that was 12 inches deep and three times the size of this. And any time I took a measurement from the frame that was around here, so let's say if I wanted to locate this point here on the large piece, I would measure from the frame's edge into that point there. Let's say if it was four inches, it means that on the large piece it would be 12 inches in from the larger frame. If I wanted to know the depth, I would measure in from the height of the frame and say, you know, it was about three quarters of an inch deep. It would be about two and a, qu a quarter inches deep. Using that old technology, that old, old technique, I was able to transfer the proportions and this exact composition to the large scale piece. It's a technique that few artists are using today because it is somewhat time consuming. I chose to use it just simply because it was my background. I wanted to document the process because few artists are using it today. Not to mention that there is still another value to it and that is that it's much cheaper. But there's another advantage to using the old technique and that is that once it's in clay, I'm still making changes. So if you were to look at, at this piece here and compare it to the final bronze, the full scale bronze, there are changes, noticeable changes, that you make decisions about those kinds of changes about the composition uh, as you're working on the large scale piece. So the advantage to using the old technique is that it gives you more liberty to adapt to what's happening when, when you're making the piece. The, the finished piece is seven feet tall by about five feet wide, by about 14 inches deep from the highest point to the deepest point. So after the clay sculpture, there is another intermediary step. The clay sculpture is not stable enough to be shipped to the foundry, so a plaster copy is made. By first making what is called a plaster waste mold, which is in essence a negative shell of the original clay sculpture. Reinforced plaster is cast into the waste mold, and the waste mold is chiseled away, and what's left is an exact copy of the clay sculpture. From the design phase up until making that waste mold, all of that was completed here on campus. Then once the plaster cast was completed, we, we shipped that to a foundry in Italy where a subsequent rubber mold was made. A wax copy was made from the rubber mold. More work was done on the wax version. The wax is used to make a bronze cast using an old technique called the lost wax method. And ultimately the bronze was touched up somewhat in some areas. A patina was given shipped and installed.